Hello everyone, we want to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas and thank you all for joining us in our online Christmas service here at City 10 Church. And even as we enter into a time of worship, let's give our best for Jesus is the reason for this season. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Light up the world, treasure of heaven, brilliant like the stars in the wintry sky. Joy of the Father, reach through the darkness, shine across the earth, send the shadows to fly.
I've titled today's sermon as my unique checklist for this Christmas. We all have checklists for every occasion, for every event. For Christmas, at least a few weeks before, we would go down to the shop, purchase lights, decorate the Christmas tree, list the people that we would want to give presents, wrap the Christmas presents, buy good clothes, buy delicious cakes, and we would also list down what movies that we would like to watch or what sort of lunch or dinner that we'd like to serve our guests. Well, all these preparations are great and wonderful, but we need to remember one thing, that this season is all for Jesus and it is all about Jesus. Let's turn our Bibles to Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verse 1 to 14. I'm going to read the first few verses now. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. Caesar Augustus, his original name was Gaius Octavius or Octavian Caesar. And he was one of the most powerful emperors on the face of the earth. The Roman Senate gave this title Augustus, which means majestic one or honored one or worthy of reverence. So during his reign, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that everyone must go to his own town to register. So each Jewish male had to return to his town to record his name, his family, his property, and his job. And this census served two purposes. One is the military purpose, that they would take the best men and train them in their armies. And the second one is it served the tax purposes. They had the census because it can fund the government. So Joseph went up from the town Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem to town, the town of David. So the distance between Nazareth and Bethlehem is about 90 miles. So imagine uh, the travel in those days. There were no cars, no planes. So indeed, this journey was difficult for them. But Joseph obediently traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem where the scriptures had foretold the Messiah would be born. We see that in Micah chapter 5 verse 2. But you Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Amen. While they were there, verse 6, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn son. Firstborn a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. I still remember we as a couple when we had our first child, the amount of preparation that we did, the amount of pressure that we went through was massive. We had to make sure that the diapers are ready. We had to make sure which hospital should go, which doctor to consult. A lot of thought was put in when my daughter was born. Now look at Mary and Joseph. 90 miles of journey and when they landed 
When they arrived in Bethlehem, there was no room for them in the inn. And all that she did was, she wrapped him in the clothes and placed him in a manger. So Jesus was not born in a sophisticated hospital with great treatment. He was born in a manger. So here is the first point of our unique checklist for this Christmas. The first one is this, I will make room in my heart for Jesus. Well, if you're someone who's listening to this message, debating, reasoning about the birth of our Lord Jesus, questioning about his works and his teachings, doubting his miracles, or simply don't believe in his existence, here is a chance for you. Believe. Invite Jesus into your heart. Make room in your heart for Jesus. And one of the ways that you can invite Jesus into your heart is by confessing your sins and by declaring that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Amen. And to those who have been journeying with Jesus, you may say that, that I have allowed Jesus into my heart. But I want to say, there are areas in your life, the doors of certain rooms that are completely sealed. I still remember uh, when I was in school, my mom used to pack lunch and give it to me. And my responsibility is to bring back home the lunch box after I had finished my meal. Sometimes I'd forget and the worst comes is when I forget, you know, just before the weekend on, on Fridays, which means I can get back to school on Monday to get back, um, get my lunchbox. And by the time I go back to the school on Monday morning, I open this lunchbox. This box stings. It literally stings because it has been closed for two days. It has not been washed. It has not been cleaned. Certain rooms in your heart stinks. The doors of certain rooms in your heart has been never opened before. Rooms that are filled with darkness. Rooms that are taken place by others and not Jesus. So in this Christmas, the first checklist, the first point on your unique checklist for this Christmas is that you will make room in your heart for Jesus. And you can do that by allowing Jesus to perform a divine surgery in your heart so that you can bring glory and honor to God. Amen. Let's read verse 8 to 12. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. So the good news came to the most unlikely group of people, the shepherds. They were poor, they were humble, not educated. And their full-time job was to take care of the sheep. Now the Pharisees considered shepherds as unclean people and they thought that these people continued to violate the laws. But look at this message, look at the good news. It came to the shepherds first. The good news of great joy for all the people, not just for the poor, not just for the rich. It came for all the people. 
The second on your checklist for this Christmas is this. I will not be afraid for Jesus is with me. The first few words the angels said to the shepherds were this, don't be afraid. Now, well, if you pause and look around and look at what's happening, what's going on around us, so many crazy things that are happening around. The COVID, the pandemic, war, persecution, poverty, natural disasters, terrorism, economic uncertainty, unemployment, divisions, disease, death, and whatnot. And we can be shaken by looking at all that's happening, all that's going on. And we as believers, sometimes we live under this heavy blanket. Have you, um, have you had such experience before? I think I've had this experience of putting heavy blankets on my body, unable to breathe. And sometimes there are questions that will make you not to breathe. It makes you suffocate. It suffocates you. Questions like, what if that could go wrong? What if there is no solution to this virus? What if my family gets sick? What if my business fails? What if my relationship fails? What if there's a recession in the global economy? What if? We need to trust in God's promises. Turn your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. It says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Are you afraid of future? Are you afraid of what's going on in your life? Trust in Jesus because he is the wonderful counselor. Because he listens to your story. Because he listens to your story, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. Trust in this mighty God. Jesus is the mighty God. He is our mighty God and he fights our battles. He fights your battles. And because he fights your battles, don't be afraid. Jesus is the everlasting father. And because he is the everlasting father, he cares for you. So don't be afraid. Jesus, the Prince of Peace. And because he is the Prince of Peace, he gives you the peace in the midst of of storms so don't be afraid don't be afraid my friend and the third thing on your checklist this Christmas is this I will introduce Jesus to others I will introduce Jesus to others let's look at verse 17 and 18 when they had seen him they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Amen. The first thing the shepherd did was they went and spread the word. My dear friends, once you have experienced a miracle, do not hold back. Do not keep quiet. Go and share what God has done in your life. Once you have encountered Jesus, do not keep quiet. Go and share about what God has done in your life. Once you have received grace and mercy, do not keep quiet. Praise the name of the Lord and go and share what God has done in your life. Spread the word. Spread the word about Jesus. At work, in your family, while traveling, Introduce Jesus as your friend, as your Lord, 
as your savior and tell them about the goodness and mercy of our Lord, the faithfulness of our Lord. Tell them about Jesus, especially in this season. Tell them that he was not born in a sophisticated hospital. He never received a, you know, a great treatment at the time of delivery. He had no luxury hotels during his ministry time. He had no place. The only place that God the Father reserved for him was the cross. And that was the purpose. Jesus came just for you and just for me. So spread the word that they will be amazed that people who are listening to your word, that they will be amazed what a mighty God that we worship, what a mighty God that we serve. He is a wonderful God. And the fourth point on your checklist for this Christmas is this. I will follow Jesus all the way. Well, Christmas is not about spending money on decorations, buying new clothes or expensive gifts. Christmas is all about Jesus. So on, on your checklist, let this point be constant. That you follow Jesus all the way. Journeying with Jesus is an adventurous one. You may question him, question him about certain things that has happened in your life. You may feel that this journey is difficult. You may feel that this cross is too big for you to carry. But I'll tell you, commit your life to follow Jesus all the way. Not just visiting Jesus during the time of Christmas or when you are in danger. Do not do that. You can, but follow this master, follow this savior, our Lord, till the last day. And his promises are yes and amen, for he is with you. So let this be your unique checklist for, for this Christmas. Or even you can add your own after these four beautiful points that we just saw this morning. I will make room in my heart for Jesus. I will not be afraid for Jesus is with me. I will introduce Jesus to others and I will follow Jesus all the way. Amen. Thank you.